Hi, I'm Nancy Friedrich, editor of Microwaves and RF, here with Bob Murrow from the Wireless Telecom Group. Hi, Bob. How are you doing today? Good morning, Nancy. It's nice to see you again this year. Thanks. Thanks, for, coming. Thanks for having us. We're very happy to see you, and we understand that we're going to see sort of follow-on to a video we did last year with Bob, so we're happy to be here. Uh, right now, they're showing a quadrature amplitude modulation power level test demonstration, so can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Basically, what we have here is we've got a uh, 16 quam, quam, depends on what you like, you say tomato, I say tomato, uh, type signal coming out. Uh, an I, so it's an RF INQ waveform. It's going into our power meter via this sensor. And you'll notice over here there is an eye light diagram. It's actually a power eye. And you'll see here the transition points of all your symbols. And there's three discrete power levels. A 16 quam signal has 16 data point locations or constellation points that represent four bytes each. And so it's a very efficient way to translate and transmit information. And the signal actually consists of three discrete power levels. So over here on the screen, you'll notice that we have level one, level two, and level three. And then we have a persistence map showing the symbol locations. Uh, the reason we think this is of interest is because you, you can look at this persistence diagram for symmetry and, and also you can measure the, the actual power levels and you can look at the symbol rates for um, symmetry. This is not, this is only able to be done with a peak power meter because we're actually looking at the power envelope, not the actual data itself. That's what's unique about this particular uh, measurement. And if I come down here, one of the things I can do is, if I if I want I, if I'm using a persistence map, I, I would look. I just want to look at the symbols. I also might want to use the statistical domain to look at the PDF of all the power levels. I want to see how um, over a statistic with a statistical view of uh, how my power levels vary. So you'll notice here I have three discrete power levels in a PDF form. Here's my data actually going by. And over here we have two green reference gates. This is for our gated parameter statistic capability. So these three levels are coming from the in between these gates. What this allows you to do is emulate a receiver aperture uncertainty or a receiver aperture size. So you can think about how much jitter you can actually tolerate in your receiver circuitry with respect to your PLL. Another thing that you might want to look at is if we go back, if we look here and typically in a receiver circuit, a wireless receiver circuitry, you have uh, filter characteristics when you're going from your digital domain to your modulated domain. And a filter is required so you have a, because you don't have an infinite uh, bandwidth filter on your receiver side. So down here I'm going to change my filter coefficient and I'm basically going to uh, low pass filter it. And it's hard to see from the signal itself, but you notice that my histograms, my PDFs are getting wider. That's telling me that I'm low pass filtering my data and my power levels vary more because the shape inside my gate has changed. So that means that my signal quality is degraded and my bit error rate performance might have gone down. So you can see this, you can measure it and see it statistically. And also if we go back to the pulse mode, you can clearly see that the square edges have been rounded off. So uh, this would be for use for system level testing. Uh, modulated signals can be used in conjunction with our other amplifier testers with the dual CCDS. And this can also be used with our EBNO series precision noise generators um, to emulate noise getting onto the signal. So that you can dial in a precise signal to noise ratio run the signal through it, and then see what real, how real-world noise couples onto the signal. Okay, okay. very nice. And Thank you. Obviously, you know, there's so much implementation of MIMO and 64 QAM, so this is a, a very handy solution. I'm sure a lot of people appreciate it being out there. Uh, we, we like that. Thanks for spending the time. Thank you.